chemo or draw bloods, um, much nicer for the patients. So we have different types. Um, so central venous cactus that can be single lumen, uh, dual lumen, and they all basically um, go either through the internal jugular or subclavian vents and terminate in the superior vena cava. Where they differ from a dialysis catheter is they don't ever really go into that atrium. So they literally sit right above into the vena cava. Um, they're nice, they're quick, we can quickly do it at the bedside, physician can do it, or there's actually nurses who put in the pick lines, really strict, effective technique. Um, Disadvantages of central lines, it's the same as the dialysis caps, meaning that you cause a new thorax, aeroblism. You know, tunnel lines have um, a low risk of infection to the temporary ones, but once they get infected, it's hard to treat. It's hard to get the antibiotics into that area. Um, so then you have to get them out. Um, so kind of like, I don't know if you can see on there, but basically, you can see how a pink line kind of basically threads up through the basilic vein, and it ends in the same place as that junction of the superior vein paper. So Clavian lines kind of doing the same thing. And then we also have something that Sierra Vista's now start to use is a synthetic vein, midline vein. And it's not a pick, it's just basically a very long IV. And you might, they might go home with that. But they tend to be just used in the hospital. Pick lines like a 20 gauge or 22 gauge? Yes, it's not that about 22. Awesome. In fact, while I'm talking, I can actually then, show you one. Is there a device called a super pick? Yeah. The power pick, and that's power the one I've got. This tends to be the one they use, and the reason that they use it, this one hasn't been in a patient. This is actually a fully intact one. Um, so you can see, they usually start here. They're going to thread that up. It's going to basically come How out. They, like, they use an ultrasound machine. How they do it. Huh. And they basically decide they'll map first and have a look at cephalic basilic. I got a patient the other day I had, he had really bad um, psoriasis. We deliberately chose the inside aspect for the um, cephalic, because no, we did the basilic because um, it was better. The, the skin was better for her to access. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then they'll usually shorten it down. Sometimes they won't though, if they're getting lazy, but usually they will short it down and, and pull this along so you've not mm -hmm. got loops underneath. Because one of the things I was gonna tell you is if you have a patient at home and there's a loop underneath or it looks like it's being pulled, most of the patients actually know how their line's supposed to look. They could say, oh yeah, they had to pull it back. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it's dislodged. Mm -hmm. Even if it's dislodged, if you look at how long that line is, you're going to be able to use it. It just might be that it's now in the smaller portion of the either cephalic or basilic, and it mightn't flow as well, and it's more likely to cut off. Are so, they sutured in? Yeah, they're sutured in, and there's like a little clamp device. Um, can I have a look at um, This is what usually what you see, but they're sutured, and we do the dressings on a weekly basis. It's actually so kind of see it there. And they're called power picks and the reason we like them is because these can be used for injecting dye if we have to use them in the radiology because the, um, the injector has to have a certain pressure that it can deliver. It has to be able to do five mils a second. You're not going to worry about that but that's what we use it for. So which, which lumen would we access? You can either or. Are they the separated same. all the way to the end? Yeah. So if you were going to give uh, yeah, so you actually, you, yes, that's why we like them at the hospital. Precipitate. Yeah, we don't have to worry about giving meds in either port because they don't actually mix until the end. So we can, you know, have, you know, if we've got incompatible drugs, that's how we do it. We figure out what the lumen is. Sometimes we have extensions and little, you know, traffic lights so we can mix all our drugs down one lumen. But so, and then this one again, you see those white caps? So those are what you're going to see in the hospital. You might see those on the IV lines in the hospital. You never take those white caps off. So those white caps work like similar to the yellow one. It basically provides a, pre a positive pressure that's called a smart site. And so with a pick line, ideally, you do one with, if they're gonna use it, you get a really good scrub of the hub, you know, 20 seconds with the alcohol, scrub it. <laughs> you don't mind, honestly. <laughs> so yeah. And then you're basically going to pull back again 10 cc's. And um, here's the kudos with a pick line. I'm going to concentrate most on this. You always use a 10 cc syringe with them. You never use a 3 cc or a 5 cc. Always a 10 cc. It's actually to do with the pressure. The smaller the syringe, the higher pressure exerted at the tip. And you don't want to crack the tip. You don't want to cause any problems with cracking. So. If there was a thrombus there, you could maybe really, really like, because yeah, if you can't 
push down that thing and release TPA. It's a deep propagation. But yeah, you don't want to force it because you could crack the tip and that could then go to the heart, go into a vessel, and you've got a thrombus. So, so you guys, we have to, but do we have to call for every single one of these ports to access? That's what I forgot. That's what I, I didn't know, is because, like, again, to be honest, because, I mean, it's not really a central line in the country. So CBC, pick, yeah, fistula. You need any? I thought there was some that we were, See, that's were the part I don't know. We have the nurse do it, though. We don't have to. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But or this yeah. one, you're not going to worry, like, mm -hmm. a, a central venous catheter, like, because it's not going into the heart the same way as a dialysis cap, and you can treat it pretty much like a, d a regular IV. You're just going to use really good clean technique. You just have to really scrub those hooks. And just yeah. not like a slow med push. To it's such a cool yeah, and use it. Just always use a 10 cc syringe on. And you know you can pull. Sometimes you can't pull back, but you can push. Because what happens is you get these little fibrin clots on the end of the line and what it's like is a trapdoor. Mm -hmm. So you can push and it opens the flat door trap door up, but then when you try and pull back, it closes the trap door. And that's why you always wonder like, why can I not get blood back? That's why. Same thing with the dialysis lines. You all think, well, you know, why can I not get blood? Um, so that was about picks. They can be in place for up to a year. Um, you can the um, are more suitable for um, vesicants, like the chemo. So uh, less irritation of the um, vascular site. Um, they do have an association with DVTs, um, but they're really um, getting much better at the insertion process technique and infection. I mean, they're really strict. When you go in there, I can't even go in the room when they're doing it without putting a mask on. So you just leave them alone when they're doing it. Oh, you can tell, yeah, everything's draped off. Yeah, I mean, it really is second form surgery. Yeah. Even the, I mean, the ultrasound machine has its own sterile sheet, everything. Um, so the other thing you might see, oh, this is another picture showing how it goes down through. They're pretty cool. And there's a pick in a patient, so you can see how it's secured. And those parts are slightly different, same theory. You might see blood in those parts. They're really weird when you... When you actually pull back on them, the blood actually fills the outside of the plastic. It's mm -hmm. kind of bizarre, but it's just another system used for creating a positive pressure. Polar caps, you might see these with um, cancer patients. Um, so these are ones that are basically implanted with different types. Um, this actually just happens to be made by the same company as a pallet. But basically it's a metal or um, it's a metal um, drum that's under the skin that has a, like a rubber that you can inject into with a hoover needle, and the needle goes in at 90 degrees. Usually, you guys will definitely not be able to access this, but you might have a patient at home. We, we did at one point, this was Rudy. Because that's what I'm saying. No, yeah. yeah. This was Rudy, and then we, Lori went through specific training on how because to Because it has to be it. usually signed off, there's a competency on this. Yes. Uh, so I would imagine, like, <laughs> if she did it, so maybe she can do that again with you guys, but usually, like well, the patient, patient the patient will do it to themselves. Uh, I think he is. Yeah, he's over at uh, Rudy. 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 Oh, yeah. Mission View. Oh. Yeah. One ten. They're uh, different. Yeah. Oh, different. Different Rudy. Oh. Yeah. The, the, the problem with them is quad, again, I mean, quadrant. even a leukemic patient or you know a cancer patient, they've got their immune system is so compromised. It really is strict technique <coughs> when you're accessing this. You just don't want to give them an infection. But if you're in a facility, you can have right. the nurse yeah, do it for you, and yeah. then you're. Exactly. So you might see it where the needle's sticking out, and it's literally at 90 degrees, and they usually have a whole system to help support that and tape it so that you'll see it. But it's the same theory. It basically, once you've accessed it, that line accesses into the subclavian or jugular, and it's sitting in exactly the same place as the central line on pickers. <laughs> the nice thing about why patients like it is they can shower and bathe, and it's usually got good, uh, good longevity as well. Um, so the, and that's kind of like showing how it's sitting in the skin, and that one is actually going into the subclavian. Okay, and you'll see like you'll see like above the skin, you'll see where they're being injected. They get infected. You might get cold to someone that's got sepsis, and you look at the where the site is, and you'll see it's red, angry, inflamed. Um. So yeah, 15, 20. So it's basically again, if you're at the hospital, ask them if they've got chlorohexidine scrubs. If you are want to use them, or if you. Taking the patient, they have these little green caps. Have you seen these caps they use? Oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, they're embedded with chlorohexidine. 
um, tenants decided that they were too expensive. They're 20, uh, 20 cents a piece. Yeah. So they were limiting them to central line use only. Um, I know Dignity was using them on everything. But yeah, they're 20 cents a, a piece. So now what Twin and Sierra's got is they've basically got chlorine including embedded alcohol, like, like an alcohol pad, but it's chlorine steam. So they're slightly different from these doors and all the central lines. Um, so again, just <coughs> say I don't always use 10 seat syringes on all central lines, all picks. Um, obviously don't use it if it looks like it's infected. Um, but all you do is if something's infected, um, you give them a bolus of whatever's growing in there, and then 30 it's minutes later they're going to have to be in the and be growing up on you because it's infected now. You know, red streaking at the other side of the virus when the vessel is infected. Um, yeah, hot powder cats are hot on top of the pet. Pig wines aren't, unless they say that they are, but they're not. So when I say it's heparinized saline, it's just 100 units in a mill. So it's, it's really weak. So even if you did flush some of that in, it, it's not big deal. So midline, like I say, all it is is a really long IV line. And it's nice because again we can give um, the dyes in, like you know when they're doing radiology studies, they can push against them. But yeah, they just last longer than a peripheral IV, so it's kind of nice. And you don't necessarily want to put a more invasive pick line in. Okay. Medport. What's a medport? Medport's an, another name just another for name. yeah. And there's there's loads of different names out there that get thrown around, like you hear brochons. So brochons work by having, you know, saying about the trapdoor, it's that theory that when they're not in use, that trapdoor closes and stops blood going in and nothing can clot that line off. It's, um, so a lot of um, chemo patients would have to say brochon and it just looks like one long line and it usually hangs out of their chest and it seems really long. They always seem to be really long and you have to loop them up. Um, but yeah, they'll say, oh, use my med port, it just means my central line. Just different companies, different brands, terminology, but at the end of the day, they're all doing the same thing. They're accessing into that large vessel, but they're not going into the atrium. So, so if there's different lines, what, what is there like a general thing to just call them ports or just call them access lines or call them like Well, a, 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 a picks, yeah. Well, picks, I mean, you always got to know what picks in the arm because it's a, um, a peripherally inserted central catheter. That's what it stands for. If it's central, if it's in the neck here or here, just call it a central line. Or you could say it's the dialysis central line, if you're not specific to dialysis. And if it's a um, porta cath, you want to know because it's the one that sticks the needle. I mean, porta caths are pretty much porta caths. That tends to be what gets called in the But otherwise, yeah, I mean, a pick's never going to be any, it's never going to be lower arm. It's always going to be in this section of the arm. So, yeah. All right. Quick, uh, quick comment. So we, I went on yeah, a meeting so the other day. This is a kidney story. So, okay, so uh, I ask any took stories a, that you want to review? Took a transfer up to Lucille Packard, the 11 year old girl. Um, went to the ER for uh, mom had noticed that she had peed for the last couple of weeks five times a night with excessive drinking of water. So okay. she was excreting and also needed to have a lot more fluids in her, becoming a lot more weak and a lot more edemous. So they went ahead and did a uh, uh, kidney check on her and everything looked fine. <laughs> they finally did a uh, CAT scan and MRI and she had a tumor on her pituitary. Okay. So and that's where the kidneys started to get an idea. Right. And, uh, and now does that make sense because I talked about so, ADH correct. and what's released by the pituitary gland. So yes, the tumors can do that and that's, they can always be like the, the diabetic and insipidus. The other thing that will do that is when you go into brain death. So when you herniate, and they call it, so when we do harvesting with a patient, one of the parts of harvesting a patient is, is you do electrolytes sometimes every four hours. Because what happens is the brain will go into DI. All these confusing messages are being sent off until it settles down. And you can be emptying that fully. I mean, they can be putting up like six, eight liters. So you're just constantly changing their electrolytes. Their, um, their sodium, sometimes they hold up sodium as well. So we have to deal with that. Yeah, but I, I, that's why I actually did that because it's kind of, you guys come into contact with the medications. It's like, well, what is that working on? And it actually helps to understand why. I mean, I have dialysis patients that sometimes are like hypertensive two forties, and they are on like oodles of blood pressure medication. In the old days, we used to just take a kidney out because they'd figure out that basically 
that the juxtamazillary system, which produces the renin, was just in overdrive. They tend to want to treat it with medications now. They don't want to be that invasive and say, let's just whip the kidney out. But in the old days, yeah, it's like, and the blood pressures would plummet, they go down. But yeah, now they use ARBs, of course, which is the, those are the angiotensin receptor blockers. So one blocks where the angiotensin works on the, on the, um, the veins, and the other one just works by actually blocking the angiotensin itself. So like, they, they convert. So ACE inhibitors stop angiotensin 1 from going to angiotensin 2. Yeah. Anything else? And that was a lot. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank Very you. Thank I love okay. all the pathogens. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think I'm ready. Um, yeah. I said, no, no sticking yourselves. Yeah. yeah, these are the safety devices. They just got these new ones, and I don't kind of like them. They're like a blue yeah, yeah. parachute thing. But, but yeah, they're pretty. That's why you don't want that needle to come out. See, if you get stuck with that, you get the good balls of blood. That's a hollow